Alex is a tough hurricane. One of the wettest we've ever seen from the standpoint of water. Rarely have we had an experience. See, I could make a whole bunch of jokes, but right now I know there are a lot of Americans that's really in dire needs because we have historical landfalls about to hit, and this man is talking about the hurricane being the wettest he's ever seen. If you're in these congressional districts and are starting to evacuate on I-75, remember, your congressperson refused to vote for FEMA funding. Watching videos of people who can't afford to evacuate because flight prices out of Tampa Bay just jumped sky high, this is predatory behavior and should be banned, especially during states of emergencies. It should be illegal for airlines to price gouge for cities trying to evacuate a hurricane. $1,100 for a one-way ticket out? That's unethical. Can we agree on that? Now, what's crazy is that the Biden-Harris administration passed a bill that was literally decreasing and making it restrictive for the airline industry to be able to do this price gouging. But guess who want to reverse that with transportation policies and Project 2025, huh? Donald Trump. It should also be noted that in 2017, Trump signed an executive order during his administration that undid a similar rule before it could take effect. And speaking of 2017, he already showed us what his presidential response would be when Americans is dealing with all type of hurricanes. Remember he was shooting the paper towels? So Congress did not approve a $10 billion increase to FEMA's budget while we're in the middle of a hurricane, okay? They didn't add it, they said no. So essentially they're cutting FEMA's budget and now they're on recess for the next six weeks. Did you know that? Did you know that the, the, the United States Congress, they're not there right now. If you need them, they're gone, okay? They are on recess for the next six weeks. This is their schedule, okay? Do you see this? They just got back from summer break not long ago and now they're on another six week break while people are stuck still. Okay, so this hurricane is bad. It is horrible. The south side of Atlanta got hit so hard. And we have a family friend who's doing search and rescue with helicopters. There's people in North Carolina who still don't have power, who still don't have water, who are stuck. Like just absolutely stuck. People are fighting over food. People are fighting over resources. It's getting bad. And they cut FEMA's budget and left. 30 plus miles of gridlock traffic trying to get out of Tampa, Florida. A Category 5 hurricane headed towards Florida while that area already trying to recover from Hurricane Helen is some crazy business, man. And the more I read about it, it gets scary. Hurricane Milton is undergoing one of the fastest rapid intensifications ever observed in the Atlantic. It is now a 155 mile per hour Category 4 storm, just two miles shy of a Category 5 status. Not a single weather model predicted the storm would strengthen this so quickly. And look at it, man. To me, that means that just like what we see with Hurricane Helen, it hitting areas of North Carolina that ain't never used to getting hit by hurricanes, we're going to see that same thing from Hurricane Milton. And man, listen, man, I hate to be that guy right now, but I'm just wondering why all of the science people that come out of the woodworks and we start talking about biology and gender, how come y'all ain't got that same energy towards science when we're talking about climate change or global warming or what's happening in our ocean? You can't be sucking that fossil fuel and big oil peen that hard and that much, but you just literally ignore all of the horrible environmental impacts that we have and we're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Education is elevation, and I'm really going to be watching the news of what's happening with Florida and the surrounding areas in these next couple of days because, my God. We're in evacuation zone A, apparently. That's the thing. If I could get out, I, I would, but where are we going? Everything is booked. There's nowhere to, unless you're hopping on a plane and evacuating your family, where is everybody going? I can't go north. Everything's booked. Where am I taking six kids and four dogs and three adults to? I can't go to a hotel. I can't go to a shelter like that. I would have to book like an Airbnb or something. Because I can't afford to do that. We just have to hunker down. Like that's literally all we can do. And I just feel like we're sitting ducks now. I have 10 fucking ducklings to work out. So even if they do mandatory evacuation, I don't know where the fuck, where am I supposed to go? We'll be the first zone to evacuate because we're zone A. They already did mandatory evacuation for the beach. Where am I supposed to go? Unless you put your 
family on an airplane, which I can't afford to do. It's supposed to be a category four when it hits the Gulf of Mexico and then hopefully um, go back down to a three before it makes landfall somewhere between Fort Myers, which is where we live, to Tampa, which is our only other retreat, our home away from home, that our, our family away from home that welcomes us in. We were there for a whole week for the last hurricane. We can't even go there because that's literally the second location that this hurricane might possibly go. We can't take the chance of being stuck on the road. We don't all even fit in our vehicle. We have a seven passenger suburban and we have eight people plus my mother-in-law and four dogs. Uh, uh, for Ian, the water came up to our front door. Hopefully that's the worst it gets again. The ground's already pretty saturated, so I don't, I feel like we're just sitting ducks and Sad. Man, the ecological disasters that a lot of Americans is dealing with because fossil fuel industry wants to put profits over people is very just, uh, just, just, just make you mad. You feel me? I remember I watched a documentary years ago about the collapse. I think it had a dude named Michael Rupert. And he talked about how a lot of the fossil fuel industry was already warned by a lot of the scientists and experts about how heating up the earth with their fossil fuels and doing all the things with the oil was not good for the environment. As a matter of fact, I remember the ads like, don't be fuelish. Talking about the hour, there were multiple ads of the experts warning us that the heating of the earth with all these fossil fuels was going to cause ecological potential damage for the entire world. And this is why J.D. Vance and them in their debate was talking about don't trust the experts because the experts been warning us about what's going on. And the thought that the airport industry is trying to capitalize off of this disaster by hiking up prices is just like disgusting. Most people in this country are already trying to rub two nickels together and decide whether they're going to pay a bill or feed themselves. And now we're making them decide between having to evacuate, knowing a Category 5, that's what it is now, a Category 5 is hitting their shores. They have to muck it down because where are they going to go? Meteorologist John Morales is visibly emotional while explaining how much Hurricane Milton has intensified. An incredible, incredible, incredible hurricane. Uh, it has dropped... It has dropped 50 millibars in 10 hours. Um, I apologize, this is just horrific. Hurricane Milton has the potential to make history as the strongest hurricane ever to make landfall in the US. Milton is currently ravaging through the Gulf, producing 180 mile per hour winds with 200 plus wind gusts accompanying it and hurling towards the west coast of Florida. Currently, the strongest hurricane to make landfall was back in 1935, before hurricanes were named and it was dubbed the Labor Day Hurricane, and in comparison to Milton, she would have been considered a baby, hitting the Florida Keys with 160 mile per hour winds. Most of us can remember Andrew, Charlie, Ian, and the notorious Katrina, and even they only brought between 130 and 140 mile per hour winds. With Milton continuously intensifying and already at 180 mile per hour winds, even if he does weaken substantially before landfall, we are still looking at record-breaking catastrophe. If you are along the pathway of Milton, please stay safe if you were not able to evacuate.